The SOLIDWORKS for Makers package includes the same best-in-class design software that is used around the world. This video is a basic introduction to SOLIDWORKS and 3D modeling. I'll walk you through how to model this mounting plate for the rod holder and point out important elements of the user interface along the way. Then I'll save the part to the 3D Experience cloud storage and add it to an assembly demonstrating how easy it is to start simple and build up complex designs. You should already have SOLIDWORKS installed, but if not, go back and follow along with Todd in the previous video. With SOLIDWORKS open, we'll start a new part from the file drop-down menu. Every new file is created from a template. Templates contain document-specific properties, such as drafting standards and units, which can be changed at any time through the options icon. If you find yourself making changes frequently, you may want to consider making multiple starting templates. The SOLIDWORKS UI should feel familiar, Across the top are your drop-down menus. You'll find every command in the application here. The top ribbon, or command manager, is context-sensitive and provides quick access to common tools. Sketches are the foundation of creating 3D geometry. Starting a new sketch prompts us to select a plane on which to create the sketch. Let's choose the default top plane. Using the center rectangle tool, hover over the origin to snap to it, click once to start, drag it out, and click again to create your first shape. Escape, we'll get back to the selection tool. Relationships such as horizontal, vertical, and coincident are automatically added. Sketch entities displayed in blue indicate that they're undefined. Clicking and dragging is a great technique to understand what are the constraints need to be added. To fully define the rectangle, use the smart dimension tool. Simply select the line entity and type the desired value. Confirm and exit out of the sketch from the top right hand corner. With the sketch selected, switch to the Feature tab and use the Extrude command to create a solid feature from the sketch. The Property Manager is now displayed automatically and will use it to input direction and thickness of our extrude. As soon as we OK the extrude parameters, the Feature Tree is displayed again allowing us to continue our design. The Feature Tree provides an outline view of the active part, assembly, or drawing showing how the model was constructed. If any changes need to be made, Edit Feature is a quick right-click away. Continuing with the design, start a new fillet feature, specify a radius value, and use the quick selection menu to auto-select the remaining three. Then select any of the top edges and use the pop-up menu to add a chamfer around it. The whole wizard provides instant access to a library of hole types, drafting standards, and sizes. Sketch points are using the position sketch to define the location of the holes. Click to create the first point and then draw a horizontal and vertical center line that we'll use for symmetry. Holding down the control key, select the point and center line, then mirror feature to create the second hole instance. Then drag to select the top two, hold control while selecting the horizontal line and mirror again. Mirror automatically adds a symmetric relationship we still need two more dimensions to fully define the locations, which I'll add, again, using the Smart Dimension tool. The Heads Up Toolbar gives me quick access to standard views. Use it to switch to an isometric. Okay, now we'll go ahead and repeat the same process we did for the first extrude. Create a new sketch on the front plane, hold control and the middle mouse button to pan the model. Start with a line and then automatically switch from a line to a tangent arc by moving off the endpoint and hovering back over it. Then select the origin and circle center point and manually add a vertical relationship. And fully define the sketch by adding dimensions with the smart dimension tool. Extrude the completed sketch, this time using a mid-plane extrude to keep the part symmetric. We'll wrap up the design with a final hole wizard feature. Use the drop-downs to select a quarter-inch screw clearance through all and snap to the center of the previous extrude. To save the file to the cloud, use Save to 3D Experience. In the pop-up dialog, we are able to give the file a name as well as select a bookmark. 
Bookmarks are the closest things to Windows folders for data organization on the cloud. If it's your first time saving something, this will be empty, but creating a new bookmark is simple from the top command bar. Now that the part is saved, let's go ahead and make a new assembly from the part. We see the part we just created in the Open Documents dialog and selecting the green check mark will fix the mount to the assembly origin. Assemblies are a collection of parts in 3D space. Use Insert Component to add more files to assemblies. The Browse button brings up the Open dialog. Here you can select files that are stored locally on your computer or open from 3D Experience. I've already saved a few other files on the platform using the same method as we just did with the new part. I'll navigate to the project bookmark and select the files to open them. Clicking anywhere in the graphics area will add them to the assembly. Parts added to an assembly are initially free to translate and rotate in all directions. We use mates to add constraints and locate components. There are many different mate types available that allow you to define your model so it mimics the real world. Based on your selections, SOLIDWORKS is able to predict what type of mate you want. That can easily be changed at any time in the property manager. Lastly, we'll save the assembly to the 3D Experience platform. Give the assembly a name, and then add it to the project bookmark for easy access in the future. Now that you have SOLIDWORKS installed and a basic introduction on how to use it, have some fun and see what you can create yourself. Or if you're interested in learning more about the 3D Experience platform, check out the next video where Todd will walk you through the fundamentals.